Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got here is the new Sony RX1R2. That's right, two. They made another one, and they put the badass Sony A7R2 42 megapixel hybrid sensor in this beast. So, big improvement in autofocus abilities in particular. It also has a couple other new features that are worth mentioning, like this pop up viewfinder and the tilting screen, of course, in the back. So, stay tuned if you want to see what this camera can do, Sony Alpha Lab style. All right, so here she is on the turntable for a better view as I go over these key features quick. So I already mentioned, but we got the 42 megapixel full frame sensor, the same unit that was found in the A7R2. So it's got the 399 phase detection AF points and up to five frames per second burst mode. It's got a variable optical low pass filter, which is a pretty cool feature, which addresses some of the aliasing issues. It features full HD 1080p at 60 frames, and it has XAVCS format, which is a better quality, higher bit rate. It does not do 4K for those wondering. It has the new pop-up viewfinder, which is really high resolution, 2.36 million dots and uh, it's super high quality when you look at it very little lag things like that the screen on the back is also very nice three inches and it articulates not fully but it articulates enough so it's much easier to get low to the ground and things like that and shoot over your head a little bit um, it's capable of the 14-bit uncompressed raw files and it maxes out at ISO 102,400. it also has built-in Wi-Fi and uh, NFC so the RX 1R2 Check her out. It's got this cool tilting screen in the back now, which you can uh, easily tilt. Goes down like so, goes all the way up like this. Doesn't go all the way up so you can see, so you can stand in front of it though, unfortunately. I want a fully articulating screen. That's always what we want. We'd like a touch screen too. Not there yet. The A6500 does have the touch screen though, so it's probably coming in the future generations. So here's the lens. It's a 35 millimeter F2 Zeiss lens. Really high quality optic. And what I wanted to show you was it has this feature here where if you grab it, you can turn. See right here, you can change the minimum focus distance. So this is basically like almost a macro mode. So it limits it and then if you turn it back, this will give you the full range all the way to infinity as you can see. So when you have it in this mode, you know, you can't shoot something far away. It's only going to focus on close stuff. That's that's really what that means. And But it does allow you to get really close to stuff, noticeably closer than this, um, especially on a sensor like this with 42 megapixels and you, the cropping ability. You can really get some pretty darn good macro type shots. I mean, we're not talking one-to-one -one macro or anything, but for, this ca for a camera like this, it, it works quite well. All right, so you got the mode dial up here, and it's pretty hard to turn, so you're not going to accidentally turn that. It's got a dial on the back here for your thumb. This one's actually really easy to turn, so I can see turning this by mistake. The menu button is down here on the bottom. I like that. It's much better than some of the other cameras where it's up here on the top left. So they, they did a good job there. This thumb wheel feels pretty good. It's got a click resistance to it that's more than this, but not much more. That's actually very similar in resistance, so you can kind of accidentally turn this one as well. Uh, it's got a modest thumb grip here, you can see. But um, I've, I've read a lot of complaints that the, you know, hand holding this thing sucks and you need the expensive accessory. They sell this accessory that goes into the hot shoe and it basically has an arm that'll give you like an extra thumb grip. And clearly that'll work, but, you know, it, this isn't really hard to hold at all. I'm holding it like this with no problem. Look how I put one finger underneath the bottom. And then you could also use your other hand to hold it by the lens. So it's really not as big of an issue as uh, it's made out to be on the internet, in my opinion. But uh, let me show you a couple more things. So here's the door on the side. It's got a nice locking door. See that? It slides and it locks in. I like that a lot. The bottom is very similar in that regard with the latching door. And I like how they made the door so you can just shut it and it finally snaps closed. You don't have to slide it over. That's a really nice feature. I've been asking for that since the very first Sony camera I reviewed probably where you have to close the door and then you have to manually slide it over. It should just click close like this. So I'd like to see that on all future models. Um, one issue is when you have a tripod plate mounted, you won't be able to change the, the battery um, because of the, how long this door is. So that does kind of stink. Although folks like the Really Right Stuff, for example, do make kick-ass L brackets for this thing that will allow you to access the battery door while using it on a tripod. But you can power the camera from the USB port and things like that for extended recording. I mean, this really isn't a video camera per se, so you're gonna get limited recording times anyway. But the video quality is quite good, as you will see. So let me just show you this pop-up viewfinder. There's a button here, 
bloop, it pops up. Super high res, really easy to use. I like this feature a lot. It's great for super bright conditions in particular. It also has a cool eye cup for the viewfinder. The manual aperture here, very nice clicking. I like that a lot. And over here you got this dial here to change your focus modes. Convenient. And here's the badass lens. F2 Zeiss, gotta love that. So that's pretty much what we got, guys, hands on, um, with this unit. And what I want to do now is just want to show you a couple of things in the menu system and then we're going to go on to show you what the image quality looks like and things like that. But I really wanted to give you a feel for what it looks like in my hand and, and what I thought of it in my hand. And like I said, it's much easier to hold than you would think based on all the other reviews I read. It's really not that heavy. Like this A7 camera is definitely noticeably heavier, especially with this lens on there. So if you just put one finger underneath like that, it's, it's really easy to hold. And of course I have my paracord camera strap here. Um, it's uh, There's a link on the forums if you want to see. Just search for it on the forums if you want to learn how to make one of these. So I always have this on with a camera like that so I don't drop it. Alright guys, so I just wanted to show you what, what the size of this looks like next to my A7R. So this is the original A7R and I just have my 50mm Rocker X lens attached with this uh, cheap adapter. But you can see the camera body itself is much larger. It's thicker. Alright guys, let's move on to some real world stuff. I'm just going to go behind the camera and show you a couple of things in the menu quick and I just wanted to show you how it focuses in the lab really fast and then we'll move on to, you know, I'll go over to image quality and detail and uh, I'm back to using Lightroom so stay tuned for that. So I mounted the RX1R to the camera slider and I just wanted to show you some quick lab footage here. Come on, I know you guys love the train. Let's see me some train. Alright guys, so looking at the back of the camera here, I just wanted to show you a couple of features in the menu and stuff, and I also wanted to show you how you can change the focus while recording video. So let me just show you that real quick. If I hit the record button, um, what you can do is you can hit this button here in the center, and that will bring up the focus point by default if you have the center button set for standard. And then while recording video, you can move the focus point around. See that? I'm recording right now. So obviously when you press this button, you know, you might shake the camera a little. But I just wanted to show you that that is possible to do while recording. Notice on my screen how I have all this extra information. I kind of like that for framing purposes. So I just wanted to show you where that was in the menu. And I also wanted to show you the function button. So I'm just going to hit the menu button down here on the bottom. And if you scroll over to the right, I just want to show you where that feature is here for the uh, grid line. See that? Grid line, diagonal, and square. That's where you change that. It's got all different options. Rule of thirds grid, etc. Now let me go back to here. Image quality. This is where you can set your compressed or uncompressed RAW. You see that RAW file type? And I like to shoot RAW, but JPEG quality on this camera is quite good. I did take some JPEG photos as well. And then in this page here, you have the file format for video. And these are the settings I like to use um, for this you know, when the, when these features are available. You can click it and you can see there's more options here. It goes up to 120 there, which is quite nice for slow motion purposes. Then if we go to 3 here, we've got a couple other features, flash comp, things like that. ISO, auto, minimum, shutter speed, you can change that. That's a really nice feature, especially when you if you plan on hand holding um, this camera, you can change the minimum shutter speed you know, to like default is one one hundredth of a second, but the, the fact that it has the ability to change that is really good, especially if you have a shaky hand or something like that. Um, I have a video on how to use Sony cameras. You can check that out. Uh, I'll link up. I'll link it up so you can, uh, if you want to see in depth what all these individual features do. But this is that low pass filter here, the optical low pass filter. I just wanted to show you that. Its default is off, but you can turn that on here. So what else I wanted to show you was this function button here. If you hit the function button, it'll bring up this quick menu and you have all these options. This is configurable, so you can make these pretty much whatever you want. So this is how it's set up default though. 
and I just wanted to show you a couple of things quick like this auto ISO feature. Now notice if you hit on auto if you hit the arrow you can go over here and you can change your minimum and maximum so that is a great feature I just wanted to point that out in case you were not aware and also when you go back to the function this is your focus area you can change that mode and there's a couple different modes flexible spot things like that so I wanted to make sure you guys knew about that mode if you weren't aware uh, let's see what else we got flash and white balance right here is white balance you can change that have it configured for the lab right now drive mode this is if you want to take multiple shots in a row or just shoot one at a time and self timer of course it's got a lot of options for that uh, bracketing you can do all sorts of cool stuff dynamic range optimizer you can turn that on and bracket that a lot of features here. You can bracket with the low pass filter on and off so you can compare, you know, images. That's if you're shooting something that, that suffers from that, you know. Uh, I really hadn't had a problem with it though. And let's see, what else did I want to show you guys? Let me go into the menu here and just scroll over. Peaking level, you can turn that on and off if you're using manual focus. Steady shot I have on, that's for video. I wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that feature. It's default off and I have it on. It makes a big difference with video quality, you know, shaky cam type stuff, especially when hand holding, recording the kids, for example. Pre-AF, I have that turned off. This will save you some battery life. Phase detection area, I have that turned on. That's off by default. Um, live view setting effect on. You're going to want that on if you're using, you know, the camera normally. If you're using it in manual mode for studio purposes, you're going to want to turn that off just so you know, so you can actually see what the scene looks like if you're using, you know, external flash units, for example. Face registration. This is where you can control your custom key settings and your function menu. You remember how I told you you can configure that? This is where you do that. Oh, you got your Wi-Fi settings, things like that. Application list, you can load this thing up with some apps. I'm not exactly sure which ones are available for this particular camera, but um, they're available on the Play Memories website here. And this is in your toolbox area, a couple other options here. Change your menu style, things like that, mode guides. A lot of options in this thing. This is where you can change your language, date and time, under four here. Format, this is how you format the memory card. I do that all the time, so I'm on this screen a lot. And display media information, version, system reset. That's where those options are. The one other thing I wanted to show you was the um, face detection because I had that was off by default. And you want to turn that on, in my opinion, right here. Smile and face detection. You're going to want to turn that on if you plan on taking pictures of kids and stuff. It's default off. But when you have that on, it allows that the camera automatically basically focuses on faces. And then you could use IAF if you want. And uh, it works quite well. It's a little bit slow, the IAF, I thought. So I just preferred using the face detection personally um, because, you know, you're kind of far away from your subject usually in this case. If you're going to get really close to your subject, then you can use the IAF to ensure accuracy. But with moving children, you know, it's not really practical. All right, so right now I'm going to show you how fast it focuses. Now, it's not as quick as some of the other E-mount lenses because it has to move, you know, the, the whole lens optical assembly as opposed to just one little piece of glass in there. It's just the way the lens is designed. But overall, it's very fast in my opinion. And uh, it's definitely fast enough. All right, let's move on to Lightroom and let's see what this sucker can do. I want to show you some of the files and we'll go from there. Guys, what's up? It's Jay. We're here in the lab and gosh, it's freezing out. It's zero degrees today at my house. So pardon any background noise you might hear. I have some heaters on and stuff. Anyways, what I wanted to show you here first was some of the lab photos. So I just wanted to do an aperture run here starting at F2 so you guys can get an idea of what kind of sharpness and, um, you know, lens distortion, things like that. So here at F2, looking at 100%, um, these are all ISO 100, of course. You can see the sharpness is not bad. It's pretty good. It's not razor blade sharp like you'll see when I step it up to f2.8. Now notice here on the corners, you can read the text on the chips and stuff, but there's a little bit of softness there, like the sharpness fall off. You can see it as it approaches, you know, the, as it leaves the center area, it does fall off a little bit. And there's also a little bit of lens distortion here. You can see it on the, on the uh, molding on the ceiling and also on this wood here, which is supposed to be straight. So if I enable the lens correction profile, you can see that. See that? That's with an en enabled 
and that's with it disabled. So there is a little bit of distortion there, but you know, it's a 35 millimeter lens. So uh, they usually do have a little bit considering the size as well. Um, if it had no distortion, it would have to be much larger basically. Let's move on to F2.8 and I'll show you how much the sharpness increases. So you can see there, the sharpness really tacks up a lot. And this is F2. So there you have it. Okay, there's F4 and you can see it's even sharper. Take a look at the corners, and you can see in the corners now the chromatic aberrations and purple fringing and sharpness fall off pretty much all went away. It looks much better now at f4 than it did at f2 and f2.8. So here's f5.6, and notice the background lights here. I'm sorry about the uh, horrible lights. I, I really got to get better ones. All right, so moving on here, f5.6. Let me just zoom in, and you can see the sharpness just is even sharper, even more detail. It's just crisper. It's, it, it lost that little bit of muddiness that it had, and you can really see that on the dollar bill. This is F8, and let me, uh, I'll just show you this here. And here's F11, and you can see F11 is still extremely sharp. It looks like it's starting to lose just a little bit though from the diffraction phenomenon. All right, now here's, um, let's see, this is F16, and you can see, again, it's very sharp. It's similar to the F2.8 sharpness. It's not quite F5.6 sharp, but very sharp nonetheless. I'll just show you the corners again. See the corners are looking pretty good here. And then we got F22. Now this, I just wanted to show you the depth of field, you know, at F22, you could see it's not bad. It does soften up quite a bit though from the diffraction. It's very noticeable but you do get a pretty good depth of field here. And just another test shot here. I added the train to the scene. I had it packed away for a little bit there. So I just wanted to give you an idea what that looks like. And here's what it looks like the other way, focused on the lab scene with the train out of focus. All right, guys, so let's go through the ISO testing now. And you could see up here on the top left, we you could see the ISO. So this is ISO 102,400. And I just wanted to show you the detail. And in my opinion, it's unbelievably good. I mean, it's definitely noisy, but for 100,000, this is ridiculous. You could almost read the number here, that very small number, 7060, it looks like it says. In my opinion, that's really good. Uh, 7080 is what it says. But, um, you know, obviously noisy. Now, this is a raw file. I can correct the noise quite a bit using filters and such. Just dragging the blacks down would help dramatically on this image. But it's a nice green. I mean, it's not like horrible it's not artifact to death it, it really looks good that the detail retention is better than you would expect in my opinion especially for a 42 megapixel camera just my opinion now here's 51,000 so this is pretty much usable I mean it's definitely noisy still but I mean I'm zoomed in to 100% this is 42 megapixel look at it at this view you could barely see the noise and this is an uncorrected raw file so you could almost use 51,000 you know for a lot of stuff. I mean, you might think that's crazy, but this looks like ISO 3200 on my older Canon 5D Mark II, you know, 3200 or 6400 maybe versus 51,000. I mean, come on now. Now here's 25,000 and you can see the details really starting to come back quite well here. Still some noise there, but very limited. Not bad, in my opinion. And then we got 12,000. Now this is where it starts to get like clean, you know? I mean, you could see it, but it's very little in my opinion, totally usable. I have my auto ISO minimum set to 25,000, which is this right here on the RX1 R2. You can set your high and low ISO values. Remember I showed you earlier. So I have mine set to 25,000, but you could actually go all the way up to 50 uh, if you really wanted to. I mean, depending on the circumstances. Now here's 6,400 and you can see here, it's starting to get super clean. Not squeaky clean, but very, very clean. Now 3200, we're getting near squeaky clean here. I could still see just a little bit, you know, but I overexposed a little bit for the black in this photo purposely to help illustrate the ISO noise on this black train. So like I said, if I dragged the blacks down just a little bit, it would look noticeably better. So here's ISO 1600, and you can see here it's super clean. Here's ISO 800. It looks excellent. Here's ISO 400. Here's 200. And here's ISO 100. So you can see now it looks like a more of a smoother plastic. 
All right, so one more shot. We have another 100,000. I just focused on the actual scene here instead of the train, so you could uh, get a better idea of the detail retention. And look at this. You could still tell what the coins are. You could still see the colors. I mean, the colors, obviously, you lose some of the color punch, but it still manages to retain the colors quite well overall, considering this ridiculous high ISO value. And you can see the dollar bill there. You could read all the detail. Now, what we have here is the optical low pass filter. And like I said earlier, I didn't really notice much of a much of a difference using this or not, but I just wanted to show you in case you were wondering. So, here's an image of this tie I took, and you can see it looks pretty darn good. I mean, look at the detail. There's a little bit here and there you can see some fringing and stuff like that, but that's with it off. So, this next image is with it on. It's on standard mode, and you can see not much of a difference at all. Like, I can't really tell much of a difference, but the original image didn't look bad. It looked good. So, and this is with it on high. And again, I don't really see much of a difference here at all, but the original looks so good, it's hard to tell. Perhaps this isn't the best subject matter for this. You know, I tried to find something that would suffer from the uh, phenomenon. All right, so in the real world, I just took some snapshots around the house, of course. And um, this one here is JPEG straight off the camera. I just wanted to show you what the JPEGs looked like. And uh, this is at F2 ISO 5000. And you can see that depth of field fall off is just fantastic with this killer Zeiss lens. And this is just my jacket hanging on the chair here. I just took a picture here up close and just to show off the resolving power. Absolutely remarkable, the detail, in my opinion. That's really impressive stuff. And this is just to show the Christmas tree in the background, just a quick bouquet test. And you can see the high contrast, you know, the windows up high by the ceiling here. Their out of focus looks awesome. And even on the left here, it's extremely harsh conditions, you know, compared to this ball, which was quite dark, you know. So the dynamic range in this scene was a lot. And uh, the camera handled it really well, in my opinion. There is a little bit of fringing here on the uh, next to the curtain but very mi minimal. And just a couple of ornaments on the tree. Got that one one year. And you can see it's very pretty the way it uh, renders. I mean, just check that out. It just has that look, you know, that, that cool pop to it, 3D and color rendition. Now this is just a, sorry about the messy house and all. I just wanted to show you a picture, you know, so you can see some straight lines and stuff and get a better view of the distortion. You can see over here on the right, there's just a little bit of that distortion coming in. And on the top, you can see up by that Layla picture, there's a little bit of distortion there. And here's just my money clip on the table here, just to get a better look at some of the resolving power detail. It's quite good. And again, this is shooting JPEG mode, guys, for now. Here's another one, just the towel rack in the bathroom. And uh, I just wanted to see the bar, you know, do that cool out of focus effect that it does. And uh, I thought it was pretty good subject matter for a quick test shot. It's ISO 640, still shooting JPEG. This is shooting into a glass and with the tree in the background. And I just wanted to, you know, show off the out of focus areas and also the color rendition and whatnot. And I was pretty happy with these straight off the camera, ISO 1250 F2. And this one I edited a little bit, it's a JPEG photo. But, uh, you know, I pushed the colors a little bit here in Lightroom just to show you the effect. Now, check that out. How ridiculously awesome is that? Doesn't it look like galaxies or something? I don't know. It looks like space to me, like those cool space photos. I love the way that that renders. I have no idea what's going on in the glass there, but it, it creates some ridiculously cool effects. And here's another one, JPEG. Here's Jace. Here's another one of Jace. Now he's standing right in front of me. He's a he's a mess. The white balance clearly looks a little bit yellow here. Here's another one of Jace. I'll just zoom in so you can see a little bit of detail. And you can see it's pretty darn sharp. It focused on this eye, ISO 2000. You can see some of the hair and stuff. The depth of field is extremely narrow. And he's moving, so, you know, with the kids moving, it's really hard to get a sharp shot. And uh, these came out pretty darn good. I was impressed overall considering how fast and how much they were moving. All right, now I switched to raw quality and I just wanted to show you a few in raw. And now this is when I edited so you can get an idea of what is possible with the raw file. This is the unedited raw file. 
this is the edited raw file. So you could see there, it's it's pretty remarkable um, the way that it renders. I mean, just look at that. It looks like neon. The color on this camera is fantastic. Really impressive range of color it, it has. And this is a great subject to uh, play, play with and exploit it, you know? I, I was really happy with the rendition of this particular frame. And again, this is the raw file. And this is a glass, just a picture of the glass so you can get a better idea of what it looked like. It's just a glass with these like nubs on it and it has that star pattern on the bottom of the glass and the tree in the background. They're putting in a casino in Monticello here. What I wanted to show you was the detail. Check it out. It looks pretty darn good. Now, I can bring back the highlights. Let me just show you this real quick. In the slider here on the right, notice the highlights. You can drag that back and look at all the detail. See the dynamic range, the sensor? Incredible, right? I just wanted to show you guys that so you can see it. And I could just jack up the vibrance a little bit to add some color, drag the blacks down a little bit, clarity up, and you could see you know, what it looks like. That's a before and that's an after. So in two seconds, I just did that. So really flexible raw files, guys. Incredible dynamic range. Again, it looks like this is blown out when you first look at it. But if you look at the histogram here, you can see it's not blown. There's detail. You can drag this back. There it is. I thought this was a cool test shot for that. Plus, um, there's some interesting, you know, who doesn't like looking at sky cranes and stuff? All right, moving on. Uh, just a street scene. It was freezing out, so I just took this snapshot here to to show the, um, you know, just this little path here. I thought it was a, kind of a cool image. and But interestingly, I wanted to show you the brick detail. And there's all different kinds of bricks. Paint, things like that. You got the canopies here. And then on the top left, all the way in the top left, you have this light. And what I wanted to show you was there's a little bit of fringing here. You could see the purple. But the sun is over here to the left, so overall, that's really impressive. It's very sharp, and for that tiny bit of fringing, especially considering the sun is over here to the left, I thought that was really uh, quite good and a real-world, you know, interpretation of what you get corner to corner, you know, as far as on the focus plane, because this, this focus point was right around here, right around here somewhere is where I focused, and this pole is right about the same focus area. So the corner sharpness is really good as long as you're on the same focus plane, you know, at this distance. In the lab scene, I'm much closer to the subject, so you're going to get, you know, it's exploiting it more. Not going to get quite the same results. Now here's just a depth of field fall-off type shot, and this is just some snowy stairs. So again, dynamic range, really high. You can pull those highlights back real easily. Well, they didn't really pull back that much, but you could lower the exposure. You can see all that information is there. So moving on. And the Sullivan County Courthouse. Uh, hopefully you never have to go there. But this is just one of those standard, you know, test shots. And I'll just zoom in here to show you the detail. You can see it's ridiculously good. All that marble or whatever it is. It looks like marble to me. And here's another one. Just a wider view. I just walked back and got another angle. Show you a little more. See, it's not ridiculously sharp in the corners. It's sharp, but it does fall off a little bit. You can see it's just a little bit soft in the corners, but overall, excellent. Excellent optical quality here. And this is at f5.6, by the way, guys. Just zoom in here, give you a stair view. You can see that, again, raw file, you know, this isn't sharpened or any, anything. So, all right, here's another depth of field fall off example here. This is f2 versus f5.6 and both look killer can't argue it look at that background i mean the bouquet is butter all right this one's overexposed here so i just wanted to show you how you can pull the detail back real easily see that you can drag the highlights so the dynamic range is ridiculously good on this camera and here is a correctly exposed image see the out of focus building in the background is just dreamy i mean it's got that awesome butter effect it's like buttering out gotta love it uh here's a pretty interesting snow shot i thought just uh it's cool to take pictures of the repeating patterns sometimes and then i raised the exposure comp to plus one for this image because snow you know throws the sensor off it wants to shoot it as a, a gray there so you just raise the exposure comp when you're shooting snow and you'll get a better exposure like this one here oh it's the creepy house the creepy house i went back to the creepy house and uh this is a raw file so I just wanted to zoom in here and show you some of the detail on this 
scary, haunted, creepy house. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't really want to go in this house. Sure, there's nothing in there, but um, you know, somebody kicked a door open here. I notice, and so somebody's been in there. But anyway, the detail's remarkable. And up here on the antenna, you can see just how much detail is captured. I did edit this photo a little bit. I wanted to show you. Here's an edited version. Um, I pushed the colors quite a bit. You know, I, I use the Nick filters, and they're free, by the way, so download them, the Google Nick filters. And you can just edit from Lightroom and go right into the Nick filters and apply some cool settings, and you can easily get a result like this. And I could have pushed this way further if I wanted to. So it looks like the snow might be blown here, but the detail is there. I could pull it back if I wanted to. For example, if I drag the uh, highlights here, I can pull that back, get more detail on the roof. See that? And that's with an edited TIFF file. So again, very flexible RAW files, guys. Huge dynamic range to work with. A couple more angles. Oh, here's uh, just shooting the railing. Just wanted to show you some of the detail on the, uh, the rusty paint flaking railing. <laughs> I like how that came out. Just an interesting um, perspective, that's all. And I just put the railing in the foreground here so you can see the out of focus and whatnot. Just some more railing, depth of field type exploitation shots. And here's another railing fall off shot. And you can see the highlights are quite bright in this one, but I just love the way that it butters out in the distance. This one, I just took a picture through the railing so I can show you the detail on the door, uh, these paint you know, look at the cracked paint. It's a great uh, sample photo for detail. I mean, look at that. Just remarkable. And this is a raw file. Again, unedited raw file. All these details can be enhanced. Here's an old bicycle just sitting there rusting away. Some stairs, rusty stairs. Nice pop there. Oh, this is just looking down at this, like, pricker bush here. Little pricker bush plant. And you can see the snow on the ground is out of focus. This is at f5.6, and, and this little plant was probably like three and a half feet tall, four feet tall maybe, and it focused right around here. You can see that. And here's just a test photo to show depth of field magic, really. I mean, look at the 3D pop this image has, and look at it at f2. So here it is at f2, and it's just like dreamy. I mean, now it's like super uh, 3D looking, and 5.6, it still looks 3D, and more detail so you can see the background like what's going on and then this one it just really butters out beautifully in my opinion so loving the f2 35 millimeters ice lens for sure now over at the falls a really high dynamic range scene it's a little bit harsh lighting here but i just wanted to show you the depth of field layers from the rocks on the left the right and then in the distance there and the water is really low for some reason oh this is a cool uh just log uh, old tree but it had a lot of detail and patterns color uh, variation so I figured I would take a quick shot of that to show you the detail it's really good now is that f8 now this one I edited this is a panoramic uh, I just cropped it that way and uh, I went through the the basic edit just opening in the Nick filters and applying a couple of, of uh, custom presets that I created and I, I'm really happy with the way this came out you could see the detail on the water is just ridiculous. I mean, look at that. Unbelievable. The optical quality is just remarkable on this lens when it comes to real world photography. You can see there's a little bit of chromatic, little purple there. I didn't edit that out. I could have. I just left it though. I wanted to make sure you guys saw what this thing really does. And that's the original file. So you could see I just enhanced it a little bit. All right, so the original raw looks great, and then enhanced, it really adds some, some serious pop to it. All right, moving on. Now, this one's extremely harsh. This is shooting into the sun. Uh, this is straight off the camera, and what I wanted to show you was how much information is actually there. So if I drag the highlights back, I can drag the exposure back, and you could see there's the sun. All right, so that part is pretty much blown out you're not going to get any more detail from the actual sun area but the rest of the frame you can pull back quite a bit all right and the detail on this nail is really good look at that and that's shooting right into the sun even on the edges see the edges right here 
I mean, they're like perfect. No fringing. I mean, barely any. There's a tiny, tiny bit of green there, but it, it's hard to see. And there's a little bit of purple there, but again, it's extremely difficult to see. You have to zoom into like four to one or whatever. This is a hundred percent. So you're not going to have any issues here working files like this. All right. So check out this shot. Chinese food place, Ming Moon. They got some killer Chinese food. Been going here for a long time. All right. So we got uh, Bones Jones, my best buddy, Bonesy. Yeah, he's such a good boy. Here he is laying on the uh, laying on his bed. Took a couple of shots. He's so handsome. Look at that face. Look at that face, Bones. All right, so let me zoom in here so you can see some detail on his eye. The ISO is fairly high here, ISO 2000, but you can see the detail is quite good. Very impressive. Another one. Oh, here's a... Um, they added some uh, rocker. They added the drummer to the uh, the scene. I, I've taken pictures of this guy over time, and then they added the saxophone guy, and now they added the drummer. Uh, I, I love the Zach Mack sculptures. Don't get me wrong, but this one is just creepy. Something about that. I don't know. But anyway, detailed, remarkable. More importantly, and I focused on her, so you could see that this guy is slightly out of focus, and that's at f4. So even at the distance I'm at, you know f4 you're going to get a depth of field separation also on the bottom here i wanted to show you this piece of wood notice how the wood is a little bit distorted so let me just go to lens correction and enable the lens profile and you can see that board on the bottom it straightens right out see that and then here's some the, a closer shot of the hair and you can see here just that depth of field you know right here is where it's sharp and then as the hair stacks out, it gets blurry. I was obviously very close to it, too. And this is just another one. Of, and you can see the details unbelievable. Oh, check this out. I shot into the sun just as a test shot. Check out that lens flare. Look at that. I stopped her down at f16 to exaggerate the lens flare effect. And I was really happy with the way it came out. Um, the detail is still all there, you know, and shooting right into the sun. I mean, that's impressive stuff. And then over here, you could see the out-of-focus area, the transformers and whatnot on this pole. Very, very good, in my opinion. And here's just another angle, a little longer lens flare effect there. And this one, I just adjusted a little bit. I added a little bit of contrast and a little bit of vibrance there. And you can see, I can do a before and after. That's before. That's a straight-up raw file, and that's after. All right, now look at the detail on this guy. That's just unbelievable, right? F4, you gotta love the optics on this and the resolving power. I mean, that is unbelievable. It's just amazing. I mean, the technology is just amazing. It, it, you know, I'm, it's not like I haven't seen this before, but it's like fun, you know, when you see when you use something of this quality. I mean, it's a very expensive camera, thirty-eight hundred dollars, thirty-nine hundred. But it's it's an absolute pleasure to take photos when you can see the quality on the computer like this it's just unbelievable all right so here's the saxophone player and again detail just unbelievable and here's just one more of the uh, drummer like the whole drummer scene let me see the seal that's not the seal or 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 there he goes or 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 the seal <laughs> oh man, let's do it <laughs> Jace, let me see those heel digs. Let me see. Come on, show me. Show me those heel digs. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Go ahead, show me those heel digs, Jace. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, show me. All right. <laughs> let me see. <laughs> silly goose. You're a silly willy. All right, so here's some sample video footage, and I was just using my camera slider. It's a lot of fun, zooming in and out pretty much um, with the slider, you know, moving the whole camera, and you can get some pretty cool effects. You saw how I was tracking the train in the lab in the earlier footage, and this is just some uh, Christmas tree footage. I, I thought it created some cool effects, you know, had the out of focus area and whatnot. Here's Jace eating a cheese stick. Um, I have the volume all the way down because there was background noise, um, and I didn't, uh, it was like the TV was on, and I don't want to, 
get copyright infringement. So I just had to turn the volume really low for this. Um, but Jace was talking there. He was saying hi and stuff. Um, he's chewing on a cheese stick. I just wanted to show you how the uh, face tracking works while zooming in and out. And you can see it loses it there for a second when I go fast. But when I go slow, um, it maintains it pretty well. Right there it lost it, but then it caught back up when I slowed down. See that? So while moving, it's not the greatest uh, video tracking. But if you go slowly, it can keep up. All right. So we're going to move on to the conclusion. Coming up, guys. Look at that face. Look at those cheeks. Look at those cheeks. <laughs> All right, guys, so the RX-1R2 goes for $38.98 US, so almost $4,000. Now, that's a ridiculous amount of money, so is it worth it? Well, you know, it depends on your needs, you know. You want a camera that has this kind of image quality that literally fits in your, po in your pocket. I mean, not your jeans pocket, but I was wearing a jacket. It easily fit in my jacket pocket. So, you know, for that form factor, you really cannot get better quality than this. It's just not available, especially for this price point. So... That's it is what it is. It's like a unique item. So build quality, build quality is excellent. Sony did a great job. They refined this unit, like I showed you on the battery door and on all the other little locking, you know, on the side door. The way it's refined very nicely. The buttons feel great. A little bit of feedback could be a little bit harder on some of the dials, but overall excellent. A lot of people argue the ergonomics are horrendous on this camera. Because the camera is so small and, and relatively lightweight, I really didn't find it that bad. It had a little modest like thumb knob there, and uh, it was enough with my pinky on the bottom of the camera that it wasn't an issue at all to hold it. So again, I can understand why people would want a better grip, don't get me wrong, but in the real world, it really wasn't that big of a deal in practice. So the viewfinder is awesome, the optical viewfinder. I didn't really use the eye cup piece too much. I tried it once. It worked great, though, for blocking you know, the ambient light coming in as you're trying to look through it. But you can't pop the viewfinder up and down with that on there. So overall, though, the optical viewfinder was excellent. I, I was very impressed with it, especially the way it slides down and pops up. You don't have to pull it out or anything like on the uh, the even smaller RX100 series. The LCD screen on the back is also excellent, very high resolution, and it swivels in, uh, quite well. It feels secure. It doesn't feel like it's going to rip off or anything. Very well designed, nice engineering. The battery life on this camera is horrible. That is absolutely true. Um, every review pretty much says it sucks, and it does. So definitely going to get need two of those or so for spares, if not three. You know, you use the battery sparingly, and you could, you know, drag it out. But if you leave your camera on while you're just hanging, while it's hanging in your hand, for example, you're going to run that battery down fast. So, you know, it is what it is. It's ultra compact, and they really couldn't fit a bigger one in there with that form factor. It, it's just the way it is at this point. Image quality is absolutely stellar, as you saw. Colors, clarity, sharpness, all that. High ISO, extremely impressive. Um, let's see, optics. Optics are also incredible. The bokeh is so creamy. I love the Zeiss bokeh. That lens is fantastic. It's fast, F2. Um, you know, of course, we always want faster, but form factor wise, that's as fast as they could do and keep it that small. There is a little bit of softness in the corners, some chromatic fringing here and there, as you saw in the lab, uh, distortion just a little bit. But overall, especially with 42 megapixel, um, it's very good. Very, very good. Colors, again, colors look great. The fun factor on this camera, which is really important to me, especially when you're spending kind of money on a camera that has a fixed lens like this, the fun factor is ridiculous. It's off the charts. You could grab this camera, walk around, and find anything to shoot. And, you know, it's not really so easy with some cameras. You know, I, I don't know. Some cameras are just more fun than others, like the RX10 series cameras super fun i mean they, those cameras are amazing and and unbelievably fun to use i found the same thing with this one um i just enjoyed using it i wanted to i just wanted to walk around and take pictures with it uh the quality is so good i just wanted to see what they would look like like oh what's this gonna look like when i take a picture with this camera you know and that's what you get it's like an it's like an enthusiastic um experience you know uh at least from my point of view now you know the value overall value it's not really the greatest. I mean, you can't change the lens. You know, the form factor is very, you know, small, which is a benefit of that. 
but um, and the battery life isn't really the greatest. So you know, value wise, you could you could for a thousand dollars less, you can get the you know image stabilized A7R Mark II, and that has the same sensor in it. So and then you could use any lens. So versatility wise, you're really limited with this. At the end of the day, I love the camera and. It's great for having a second camera or a third camera if you're a pro photographer and you just want to pull it out of your pocket and take a quick snapshot, you know, at, like have it set to certain settings or something like that. Or if you just want the best possible quality camera and you want it to fit in your jacket pocket pretty much, you know, this is the one to buy. So that's pretty much it, guys. I really hope you got what you were looking for in this review. I know it's long, but I like to go through all the lab work and, uh, you know, really try to show you what this thing can do in the real world. And... Um, you know, it's just how my reviews roll. So thanks again for checking out my Sony RX1R2 review. And please be sure to subscribe and select that new notification bell they put next to the subscription thing. And that will then let you know when I put out a new video. I don't know why they added that. It should just do that if you're subscribed. But they added another thing there that you got to check off. Shopping links are below all my reviews. And I really appreciate your support, guys. Thank you. Please ask questions below and let me know what you guys think of the review and this full frame beast of a camera. All right. Have a great day. Take care.